Welcome to the Fairfield Shellfish Commission meeting, August 12th, 2020. Uh, we have a quorum. Present are Mike Carwood, Deb Detmer, Allison Savona, John Short. Yeah. Call to order. Boom, boom, boom. Um, all right, we'll just go right to bills and communications. Tim can't get it to work, so we've got a quorum. All right, did everyone have a chance to look at the July 8, 2020 um, draft meeting minutes? Yes. Yes. And does anyone have any changes or corrections? Um, this is Allison. I have two minor typos. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm just driving. Give me two seconds to pull the sheet out. <laughs> oh, this is dangerous. Okay. On, um, page, on page two, permits and access, bullet three, um, permits and access, um, I'm represented as Mr. Savona, um, and he's um, not a part of this commission, so if it could just be changed to Ms. And then uh, bullet five on page two as well under oyster bed development, paragraph two, it says Mr. Mackling, and so it just needs to be changed to Macklin. And that's, those are all the minor changes I found. All right, um, anything else? It, and John, this is Deb, Debbie Detmer, and also on bullet five under oyster bed development, under the third sentence, uh, there's like a repetitive of, um, uh, let's see. It's like the bags and then these bags. Okay. So those, it, that just sentence needs to be fixed. Okay. Mike? Yeah, I see one that's under bills and communications. I don't know if this is correct or not, but it says draft meeting minutes of February 12, 2020. Is that right? I think that was our last meeting, though. Like, I'm trying yes. to think when when was our last actual meeting? Because a couple were canceled, so but maybe it should be checked. To your point. Because I thought I I just thought that these were the minutes from yeah it says meeting minutes from July 8th. So That's I didn't know. Today. It, it was just confusing. Yeah. That's correct. Okay. And just February to uh, reiterate. <clears throat> on that oyster bed development, it is in the second paragraph, the third sentence. It said, well, it's, of course, it says, Mr. Mackling plans to power wash the bags in these bags this week. So I don't know, you might want to reword that sentence. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to approve? meeting minutes of July 8th, 2020? This is Allison, and I'll make a motion to approve the minutes with corrections from July 28th. This is Mike Harwood, our second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Okay, we go to the committee reports. So before we go to that, Tim is texting that he can't get in on the call but I'm pretty sure that was him with the BLT. So I'm not <laughs> sure what to do about it. Um, all right, so we'll go to okay. Clam Reland Planting, and I'll start off on July 23rd. We did a clam relay. We brought clams from west of Penfield Reef over to Sasco Beach, approximately 125 bushel, 30,000 clams, and uh, all went well. The uh, clams were uh, mostly little necks, top necks, and cherry stones, not too many cohogs. Um, as for relaying and planting, we probably won't do any more relays this year. Um, we could possibly do a market buy and plant uh, maybe September, October is my feeling. But, um, anything? Anyone else have anything? All right, I'll go to water and habitat quality. 
Sure. Uh, this is Debbie Detmer, and the beds were open until July 23rd when that relay took place, and the beds are still closed, and I believe they're still closed due to Milford not having electricity? That's correct. And um, I know John Short had mentioned in the notes that he did find some uh, DNA sampling results where human DNA were found at the Tide Mill in Southport Beach. Yes, that's also correct. Mm -hmm. So on the, we did do uh, a sampling the day after the storm and brought it to Mil the Milford lab, but they didn't get power back until Sunday. So we, me and Mike resampled yesterday and those samples were brought down and hopefully uh, we get an approval tomorrow or Friday. So keep it and it was on Facebook today, I guess, that people were clamming there. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Okay. We'll talk about that in terms of access. Okay. All right. That's, Anything that's else on water me. and habitat? Nope. And that'll work All on right. this. Perfect. Hermit's Hermit back there. I'm here. We got you. Yeah. How was the BLT? <laughs> Glad you hear it. I haven't had it yet. The bacon's still defrosting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Permits and access. Um, this is Allison. I'll just chime in on this. It looks like we have 314 uh, permits issued to date. Um, that's pretty awesome. And uh, it really, the 149 through online, which I think is um, – that's pretty impressive, I I think. Um, highest ever, right, John? Yes, it's a record. Great. All right. Um, That's it. So I'll put in here and say that, yes, people have been going clamming since the relay, and um, I've discussed it with Mike, and I discussed it with Tim so far that we feel that we need another sign that people can actually see and know what the sign is, what the regards to the sign are, such as shellfish enclosed. And it could either be a sign that the lifeguard puts out right next to the booth, or it could be a sign that maybe hangs off of our kiosk there. Does anyone have any... Um, ideas or think that is a good idea? Uh, this is Debbie Detmer. I think that's a good idea. Um, I would propose going with the signage when you come in by the gate because it seems like to me that's when people will check the opening or closing status. Mike? Yeah, I think the uh, same thing. I think it's just one of these things that we talk to whoever's in charge of uh, the people in the booth that allow access for them when they see it's closed to just put the sign out that says shellfish and closed so that when people come in it's right in front of them okay yeah, that, that I think that's the good idea like the, the sign that sort of folds and opens up and stands right there they could just lift it out and put it out exactly. and then um, we we'll probably need something for when um, there is no person in the booth, which the lifeguards go off duty there, I think, this weekend, I might, you know, pretty soon. And then eventually there will be no one in the booth. Um, and maybe we talk about getting a sign to put on the kiosk at that point. So since we're on the subject, I'm not sure how much signage costs, but it's fairly expensive. So um, I'm going to make a motion to spend up to $500 to acquire signs people can actually see so that we can um, that they know that the shell fishing is closed. Someone John, want to second would we, Yes. I'll second that, but my question is, would we have conservation make those signs or would we just go out and have it done by a third party? Um, I think the one we're talking about at the booth we have done by a third party and then mm -hmm. I think conservation does have a machine that cuts signs, like cuts into wood that we could possibly fashion to hang on our, um, to put onto our, uh, our kiosk. And um, 
you know, that might not be too hard to do. So, yeah, we could go both ways. I'd say we have one made and maybe conservation can help us make another one. Now, this is Debbie Detmer again. Would the, the verbiage on the signage, would there be some sort of warning too, like if this isn't, if you fail to, you know, obey the rules, there's going to be a penalty involved? Um, I don't think so. I think that no. just Open and selfish and closed. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. um, we probably should talk to DEP and see if they're actually checking every so often. I don't feel that they are. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we need to reiterate on the emails also and make sure that the emails are getting out as to when the beds are closed and open. I feel like they haven't been getting out properly. And um, I'm going to work with Brian to see if we can um, possibly take that over so that we don't have to rely on, you know, conservation who's very busy um, so that the emails can get out. Okay. All right, so I've made a motion. Mike seconded it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion Aye. approved to spend up to $500 to uh, get signage, better signage at Sasko Beach. All right, anything else on permits and access? No. All right, uh, we'll go to commercial shellfish regulations. No report. No report. Oyster bed development. Mike, do you want to start on that? Sure. Uh, oyster bed development is going pretty good. Uh, I did a check on the hats yesterday. Um, there, there are a few missing, that, but it, it doesn't. There are a few that are, have, I think, floated off the top of the rebar, or they're just laying over there. Um, could have been from the storm, but it seems like the ones that are fully submerged are doing much better than the ones that are upright, vertical. Um, but all looks okay there. The bags hanging in South Benson are doing great. Um, Tim has pretty much run with doing the power washing. I've helped him a little bit here and there, but uh, they get filled up with sea squirts like you wouldn't believe. Um, they must weigh about 20 pounds extra of sea squirts. And the power washing has been great. Um, in fact, we use Tim's power washer, so I think that we should make a motion to um, actually buy a power washer. They run about 150 bucks, maybe $200. We could probably get a good one for the commission to, uh, to clean those, and maybe we can use them for other things as well. Uh, let's see. We've been putting shell down on the new spot in, on the eastern shore of Sasco to make it a, a good environment for when we – um, try and do some more oyster development there for next year. Uh, Tim went out August 3rd with a boat, and I'm not sure how much they put down, but they put down a whole bunch. And then I went down, I brought Chill in, brought him down to the beach, and then used a sled. Um, so it actually worked out pretty well. I put down about 18 buckets, and it didn't really take that long. So tomorrow, Conservation is actually going to dump a truckload of shell at Sasco and we can use a sled to just drag it out, and anyone can do it at any time. There's a sled that's on the side of uh, the conservation workshop that we can use, and we might be able to go buy another sled. I think, John, I think sleds have run about 100 bucks. Yes. And it might be helpful for some of the workloads that we do on there. And that's, okay. uh, I think that's about it. Tim? Tim, did you have anything to add? Tim, are you there? Um, I'm not sure if Tim's there. So, yeah, Mike and Tim have been working really hard on getting this shell in and washing these bags and everything like that. Um, so our oyster development is going pretty well, I have to say. Hey, John, I do want to add one other thing. Um, I'm actually, we're the Boy Scouts. I'm going to be running just a field trip for them on one of their merit badges next week. It's going to be Thursday around 6, 6.30, and I think it's going to be at Ash Creek. Just kind of review with them what we're doing and with the whole oyster development, the hats, the bags, and then the eventual um, you know, harvesting over at Sasco. And 
Um, <clears throat> just want to see if anyone wanted to join. Um, we're also going to try and do a community run with them to try and help them have help have them help us place the shell down in Sasko and in other areas, um, just for community service. Okay, is that Thursday the 13th or Thursday the 20th? The 20th, because low tide I think is around seven. All right, I, I can try to be there. Um, yeah, I think that's choice to bed development. I think we're good with that. Uh, communications. Deb, Allison. Hi, this is Allison. Um, not much to report up to date with the emails in the Shellfish Commission inbox. Um, I think, John, you've been tending to Facebook messages. Thanks for that. Um, and I'm not sure where we stand with, you know, mailing out to our permit holders for any, um, you know, messaging or communication, but not much else to add to that. All right. So I'm going to add in is that there was an issue with getting the email out um, at, right after the relay, and it didn't go out till Monday, and the relay was done on a Thursday. Um, the miscommunications at um, town hall. And then wow. um, recently um, I was hoping that an email could have went out to remind people that the beds weren't open yet, and one went out today. So I'm going to ask Brian if there's a way that I can gain access to that email list so that I can send out emails to the permit holders to just reiterate that, you know, the beds are closed right now or the beds are open or, you know, whatever has to be said. But, you know, just so that people know what's going on. I think we have a lot of mm -hmm. permit holders and a lot of new people into clamming that just don't know. So mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk to them about that. Okay, Deb, and this is uh, Debbie. Yeah, Debbie Detmer. I'm just uh, working on revamping our uh, newsletter. Of course, that sort of got delayed with the COVID, and and I guess just with COVID. So I've been um, trying to revamp that and make it more, I guess, uh, pertinent to this time of, you know, this era of social distancing and stuff. So. Uh, a new one will be coming out shortly. All right, great. All right, so reports from the conservation. Obviously, it shows our shellfish fund balance is at $31,236, um, which is great. Um, we sold a lot of permits, so it shows. And then uh, the other stuff we went over, budget status, we won't talk about tonight. So we'll go to old business. Uh, internship for a UWS Shellfish Commission Summer 2020. I think that's already been taken care of. Uh, new business. Um, Mike, do you want to make a motion to buy a power washer? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to spend $200 or less for a power washer. I second, if you can hear me now. Yes, we can. Hello? All in favor? You can? Okay. I'm All here. I've favor. been listening. Aye. I'm just having it. Aye. 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 Motion approved. Hey, John, I'd like to make another motion. If we could spend um, sure. $100 for a ice fishing sled. Uh, I'll second the motion. I second the motion. Okay. Tim seconds the motion. Tim Macklin seconds the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion approved. All right, um, informational. So when I was doing the water sample on uh, uh, after the storm, the Wednesday after the storm, I noticed <coughs> thousands and thousands of teeny tiny little clams. So I don't know if they were steamer clams or hard shell. I don't know have a magnifying glass, but they definitely spawned, so hopefully some of them dug in. So, um, if we can ever open Southport Beach, there may be clams there. You don't have and a video of that, do you? Or are they just too No. Bad? 
Yeah. I couldn't even take a picture of the phone on my camera. I mean, the camera on my phone is not working correctly. And so I, I sent out an email, I think. Mm-hmm. They're probably still around, floating around. So if you do get down there, you can take a look. Um, another informational topic is, while well, we're doing the water sampling, is in the creek behind Southport Beach, Tasco Creek, there's a decent amount of oysters growing back there now. So it might be another spot that we consider in the future for some restoration slash development, you know, that kind of thing. It is a prohibited creek, so, I mean, it it would be more of a restoration project. Any other informational goodies? Hey, John, I have Um, one. Um, One of the things down in Sasco was um, where the buoys was, the middle buoy, I did a straight line of about um, 20 feet of shell just to see, kind of get an idea of what, you know, any kind of erosion, wave action did. And this is a few days before the storm, and it had minimal impact at all. You could still see a straight line of shell going in about 20 feet. So yeah, that's it looks good. like it's that's a good great. spot. Yeah, yeah. hopefully we can um, get some oysters actually growing there filling up that area with oysters would be really good. So well, I think that's something that proves that I, that was a, a tough storm on that beach and uh, the shell stayed. So. Um, all right, so we'll go to other. Tim, do you want to talk about what you spotted the other morning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what is it, last Thursday, um, I believe it was the 6th, John and I were out just doing water sampling. Uh, early in the morning, it was around 6.37 a.m., and we were looking over towards the area where we had dropped the buoys where uh, Mike had kind of uh, uh, set aside for, you know, the oyster development where we've been dropping shell, and there seemed to be some gentlemen out there just kind of looking around, and, you know, we just kept an eye on them and didn't really pay attention, and then uh, kind of as he was walking closer, noticed that he had three buoys in his hand. Um, so uh, I approached him and asked him, you know, what he was doing, and he said he was just removing the buoys. He thought they had washed up there from the storm. Um, and then I just let him know that they were there for the Shellfish Commission marking the area and that, um, you know, he shouldn't be taking them. So he took the buoys back. Um, he left. He, he untied one from the cinder block and then just removed the buoys from the rope. So there's still cinder blocks out there, two with rope, one without. So we just got to get out there to low tide and tie them back up and then, John had mentioned maybe trying to um, stencil or spray paint just the uh, Shellfish Commission on there so people at least know maybe that they're there for a purpose. Um, but maybe when we put up a new sign or at the kiosk, we can put up a little informational um, uh, notice saying that those buoys are there and what's going on over there so people understand why they're there and, and not to remove them. Um, so, uh, and kind of on another note, oh, sorry, go ahead, John. Yeah. No, that's it. Go ahead. Okay, um, and on another note, the action, when I asked the guy uh, for the buoys, he asked if we had any identification um, that we were on the commission, and I said, yes, we have, uh, you know, uh, permits and badges, and John was there with me. He didn't ask to see them or anything, but um, it just brought up the fact that I know we, we were issued some kind of um, badge that uh, signifies that we're members of the commission, but I know the one I had expired in 2019 when my term was up, so I was just wondering if people had badges, number one, and number two, um, if we could get new ones that are uh, current and not expired. Yeah, so I think we'll have badges made up for everyone. Hey, I got a um, question on that. You know, when, I, when I went down the other day, one of the cinder blocks was moved up on shore. Was that moved by the guy or was that moved by the storm? It- pro- probably by him. I Like I said, he was over there for a while and we didn't kind of, I didn't kind of um, uh, meet up with him until he was kind of further down towards the, the shore. So um, he might have picked one up and moved it and decided he didn't feel like moving the block or what. But I didn't walk back out there to actually see what he did. I just grabbed the boons from him. We're getting the samples. And I said, there's a guy over there. It must be Mike. And I said, <laughs> it looks like Mike, like yeah. I'm like, what is he doing over there? Like hanging around there for 20 minutes to look at that shell. And then – it was the guy who was untying the, the rope for 20 minutes <laughs> because we put some serious knots in those things, you know. Yeah. So for the record, right. for the record, it was not me. No, we figured that 
said, no, yeah, we figured it out pretty quick. Like George, what's he doing over at at the buoy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, last thing is um, Todd. What's his last name, Tim? Uh, Kanky. Todd Kanky will be should be joining the commission. Um, he's been invited to call into the selectmen's meeting on August 17th. And uh, so by the next meeting, he should be a member of the commission. All right. Uh, no public comment. Anything else at all? Nope. Not from nope. me. <laughs> Not from Tim Mack. All right. So someone's going to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. This is Allison, and I will second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Meeting adjourned. Knock on wood. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take Have care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.